This video is brought to you by Envato Elements. Jump cuts. We've always been told jump cuts are bad and do whatever you can to stay away from them. And if you're making a feature film, that's very true. But if you're making a video you just want to show your family and friends or even post online, are jump cuts really that bad? I mean, go watch any good vlog on YouTube. It's probably full of jump cuts and they're not even that noticeable until you try adding a jump cut to one of your videos and it sticks out like a sore thumb. Is it just because it's your video and you notice it more? Or is there a trick to adding jump cuts? Well, it turns out there is a trick to adding jump cuts to your project and this one tiny step can make a huge difference. Over the last few weeks, I've been taking Casey Neistat's filmmaking course on monthly.com. I'm learning a ton about telling a great story, which I need a lot of help with, but I'm also picking up a few editing tips as I watch Casey edit his movie. To make his jump cuts a little less noticeable, what Casey does is blend the audio from his two clips together and it actually makes a huge difference. Let me show you. I have two clips in my timeline with a pretty noticeable jump cut. Recently, side. Recently. Now, because I moved throughout this take, there's no way to make this look like one continuous shot, but we don't have to. All we need to do is draw the audience's attention away from the cut just so it's not so noticeable. One way to do this, the method I learned in Casey's course, is to use audio to hide the cut. And it's really simple. All you do is cut a few frames from the start of your second clip and drag them under the end of your first clip. Add a bit of a fade to both clips. And because you blended the audio from both these clips, the cut is quite a bit less noticeable. Outside. Recently, I took a filmmaking course by... Here's a jump cut before. So I decided to do this outside. Recently, I took a filmmaking course... And the same cut after blending audio. I decided to do this outside. Recently, I took a filmmaking course... The jump cut is still there, but much less noticeable. Not perfect, but it works. While on this topic, I want to talk about a few other ways you can hide jump cuts in your video. One awesome way to hide jump cuts is by using B-roll. For example, if I'm talking about using an iPhone to film yourself and I have a jump cut I need to hide, I can just take some footage of me using an iPhone and connect it above my timeline. But what if I'm talking about something like icebergs where I can't just run out and film some B-roll? Whenever I need quality B-roll for my videos, my first stop is always Envato Elements. Envato Elements has a library of over 2 million high quality stock video clips you can use in your next project. Just search for what you need, filter out your results by frame rate and video resolution, and license the clip to your project. It's that simple. While you're there, you can also get royalty free music and sound effects, video templates, graphic templates, custom fonts, and so much more. You get unlimited downloads of everything Envato Elements has to offer for one low monthly price. And with one simple license, you never have to worry about copyright claims. I've been using Envato Elements for a long time, and trust me, it's worth every penny. Try it out, you won't regret it. Now, back to the tutorial. If you film in a controlled environment like this, and don't move much, there's a couple ways to almost completely hide jump cuts. One way is by switching camera angles, or if you're only using one camera, fake in another angle. Just take the clip after the cut and increase the scale of it by at least 30%. This makes it look like you just cut to another angle and is a perfect way to hide a jump cut. Cool stuff on there. One person I really enjoy watching. The last method I want to talk about today is by using the flow transition. This doesn't work all the time, but when it does, it can completely hide your cut. I use this all the time when filming these videos. If the movement during your cut is minimal, Go to your Transitions browser, select the Dissolves category, and add the flow transition to your cut. Final Cut Pro takes frames from both your clips and tries to seamlessly blend them together. What I find works best is ripple trimming this transition all the way down to three frames. Let your clips render out and your cut is completely gone. And predict the movement. This method. And predict the movement. This method. It doesn't work all the time, but when it does, it's pure magic. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting the like button or in the comments below. And if you're new here, I post videos like this every week, so please subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next week.